lovelies and the Mr. Tully is a beautiful singer. Hello, Peg. I hope you said they're all lovelies there. Not quite. You know, yeah. And you come specially to hear them? Oh, every, every Sunday in the day. He's gone home there to make a cup of tea. He loves the choir. It's a treat to listen to that at Mass. Thanks a lot. Oh, it's ah, cute. it's marvellous. Will you be here? Will yeah. you be here Christmas Day? No, unfortunately. You'll miss it then. The hallelujah, you'll see that hallelujah. Where's the hair? If I can't like <laughs> me the choir is food for my soul I really I'm not just saying that but I, that's the way I feel about the choir it's food for my soul you know I really feel it's a great inner feel I just couldn't describe and some of the hymns just you know, the hairs stand on the back of my neck of some of them About the choir is really a joke, you know, because I had a Yorkshire Terrier here and I had him for years, you know, and he died. And I remember going to our advertising in the church for, you know, some members for the choir. And uh, I was in the choir about a week and a friend of mine used to sit beside me. She's not very well now, she, and her mother's not very well, and she looks after her mother now. And uh, I said to Rita, like, I said, like, it's great now to be in the choir, but I said, you know, I'm very sad. The dog died last week. Well, she said, don't tell me you just joined the choir because the dog died. <laughs> but I got an awful rousing over it because she, she, they were telling each other about how Nellie Weldon only joined the choir because the dog died, you know. <laughs> I always remember that, you know. Choir master Vincent Turley has been directing the Valley Farm at Choir for over 40 years and at Christmas time includes all their favourite hymns. Now with Vincent, Singing our oh, holy night, well, you know what? That just the pits with me, like it really, really makes me so happy, you know. And he has such a wonderful voice, and he's a great teacher, and he's just dedicated to the choir. Really is. He's a great teacher, and I'm very lucky to have him. Oh.
just dedicated to the choir. He's great, you know. He really gives all his time. Oh, and I mean all his time, you know. He's over 40 years up there, you know. I'm only a runner in for 15 years. So some of them now, actually the friend that used to sit beside me, she got a bouquet of flowers last year. She was 40 years in the choir. So it's about 41 years gone, I would say. And it's going strong. Oh, yeah, hopefully have another 10 years, Eileen. <laughs> Uh, once again, I would go through it again. The Gloria at the top, which you sing twice. Then you go into the fourth part and wait for that chord because there's a very abrupt change of harmony there. Since its foundation, and the choir has enjoyed the support of the local clergy and community, many of whom are fans of the choir, with a special interest in their Christmas programme. Some of you went on to the third verse, or...? We were actually recruited from the school. We were in the school choir, and you had to have major confirmation to go into the church choir. And um, we went from, as I say, from school. And at that stage, it was only a female choir, girl choir, um, first and seconds, as we were known then. And then the men joined, and we have a four-part choir now. Um, I suppose that was one of the major changes. And then another one, too, was we always um, sang the Latin Mass. And that when it, that was a major change when the English yeah. came in. We couldn't imagine singing, you know, English. Yeah, because we had always only known the Latin Mass. So, I mean, we just adapted. And here we are today. We still sing Latin motets and combined with the English. Teresa, Terry and Marion have been close friends since they joined the choir. Actually, Teresa and Terry from school and Marion since she was 19. The years singing together have forged close family ties and cemented their friendship. Definitely. Yeah, that's you. Yeah, that's definitely. <laughs> I'll have three of them. How long were an all-girl choir, naturally, we would, I suppose at this stage now, I can admit that we would have been talking about boyfriends and we would have been very giggly and not really listening to what Vincent wanted us to do or was directing us to do. And um, he would separate us. At that stage, there would be four or five of us and he would position us all over the choir. And that was on a Monday night and we were to stay there. But then come Sunday, we'd be back to our original <laughs> positions again. Yeah, he loves it now, he has it in the front row. <laughs> now he doesn't bother. <laughs> it's not worth it. <laughs> Hold on to that note for a fortnight. It is a wonderful friendship to have. For me, it has lasted 28 years, and hopefully it'll go on for another while. They're two wonderful friends. We share in everything. We share in everything our children do. Um, on occasions, we would go out together. We look forward to seeing each other in the choir and catching up on all the chat and the gossip during the week that has passed. Um, on occasions, we have been separated but we've always got back together. I won't mention why we were separated. <laughs> um, it really is. For me, the friendship is a big, important part of the choir. Yeah, yeah. 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 Lovely. Treaty, you Sorry. could wear yeah. that now. You have the feathers. Season. And the little belly top. You can have the feathers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you would love me with that one, actually. Yeah. 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 It's nice to be part of something that's giving other people pleasure and possibly 
helping them enjoy Christmas a little more, or the Mass, or the celebration of the Eucharist, and making it a little more joyful, a little more prayerful, and consequently maybe making them a little more happier. And that's a nice feeling to have. play with the folk group at 12 o'clock. So on Sunday morning, it's quite a busy morning at the church for me, first of all with Vincent and the choir at, at, uh, at, at the 11 mass, and then uh, the folk group. And then I'm back down again, of course, with the choir, we, we meet again for practice on the Monday night, and the folk group meet for practice on Tuesday night, so I, I get a fair grounding there, you know? holy person, as you would say, and not very overly religious or even prayerful. But what we do in the choir is, you know, it, it, our religious um, uh, pieces of music. So that in myself, I suppose I do my prayer in, in, while I'm singing. And the same even in the folk group, although it's a different type of music, as to, but still prayerful. And I, I find I find the consolation, I think, well, I certainly need to have the church, I need to have the Eucharist, and I need it in my life for to give me a balance. And uh, I know I, I, I would feel very bereft of, you know, of all sorts of um, feeling, I think, if I hadn't got that. I think I, I really intend to have, you know, or uh, I, I, I think it's important, it is important. The Lord is my shepherd. I think that in itself is, I mean, there are lovely ones, but that, I would think, in, in the, well, what the choir do is um, one of the nice, it gives me contentment, it gives me happiness, it gives me peace to sing it. And I think if you actually listen to the words of the Lord is my shepherd and you really absorb them, there's nothing more in life that a person could want if you can just have that. Rita Ball came to Ballyfermot from North Strand when she got married over 40 years ago. She loves Ballyfermot and the people there, but it was only three years ago that she joined the choir. I always felt I would have loved to be part of the choir, but I never thought I, it would fit in. You know, I've kind of always been busy. I keep myself busy. And um, just once uh, they were looking for new members and I happened to be at Mass and uh, I said to Terry, and Terry was a member of the choir, and he said, well, we'll join together, come on back. So uh, since then, it's about three years ago, a little over three years, I think, and I just love it. I think my favourite carol is um, Silent Night, and, uh, you know, when you think of the words of it, again, I'm going back to words, like uh, the peace and all, you know, and the quietness. It just 
you know, if you listen to it, if you listen to the words, if you think you reflect on the words of the crowds, it gives you the inner peace that you need, I think, anyway. For, well, that's what works for me, you know. That's what I like. I think carols, it's a time, Christmas, I think always brings a tear to people's eye when they listen to, to Christmas carols. It's a lovely time. I think it brings out the child in every adult, no matter how old. I had been living in Ballyferm for four years before I was married, and there wasn't a church then. We used to go down to Inchicore, or um, Chapel Isard. We often walked down the hill to Chapel Isard to Mass. Upper Bally Fermit wasn't built, you know, so it's a lot of difference, some low banks, you know. The news that comes across is always bad news. You know, there's an awful lot of good in Bally Fermit. There's more good than bad, like in all areas, I think, you know. You feel it when it's your own uh, locality, when you hear, uh, whatever's been brought up in the media, you know, it hurts.
1986 and on the 24th of August 1990 it came to a resolution and I suppose the resolution is really tonight the 25th but for a long time Brian Keenan was the forgotten man uh, shortly after he was kidnapped a matter of months there were some indications from some French hostages who were released that yes an Irishman was out there but uh, I'm being told something what's happening are we going to the press conference straight away we were going to have a look at the history of uh, the campaign to get Brian Keenan released perhaps we'll have time for that later on but I'm told now that they're entering the room in which the press conference is being held and we're going now to Una Claffey who's actually in that room now ladies will answer questions uh, over to you Brian uh, just you move over there to the next. Oh, right. Do you mind that jumper?